In this episode, we will adjust the materials in the scene. Before we start, set the ambient light first. Go to the effect panel and turn off the automatic exposure. Reduce the EV a bit. On the environment panel, switch sky light to HDRI and use the built-in cloudy HDRI in D5 render. Change the light direction to a proper angle with rotate. You can enable the sun option to further enhance the light effect. If you want the sun to shine from the back of the aisle between the two buildings, choose custom instead of follow HDRI. Now you can adjust the sun's altitude and azimuth angles. Then increase the sunlight intensity and the sun disk radius. The sun disk radius affects the sharpness of shadow edges. The smaller the radius, the sharper the edges are. To match the cloudy weather, we increase the radius value and get a soft shadow edge. Now ambient light is basically set up. Please remember to click the refresh button in the scene list and save these changes. We can move on to adjust materials. Get ready. We have a lot to teach you. Feel free to watch again if you miss any points. First, let's add materials for the floors. Open the D5 asset library in the upper left corner and find a material for the pavements. Use the hotkey M to close the asset library. If you have two displays, things will get easier. One display for the asset library and the other for viewport which is quite convenient. Then click on the model surface to apply the material. Now press the hotkey I to pick the pavement material. We can see it's a displacement material. If the bump effect is too obvious, reduce the height parameter. If it is darker than expected, change the base color to a brighter one. Now the seam still looks a bit dark, you can lower the AO value. After that, we want to change the direction of material textures by 90 degrees, and the rotate tool comes in handy. Let's adjust the UV scale again. Use the offset parameter to move the material texture alongside the X or Y axis. To make the materials more delicate, you can slightly reduce the roughness and make the material smoother. Now the tiles have stronger reflections. If the color is a bit dark, you can pull the color intensity right to further brighten the material. Next, search for concrete materials in the library and apply the one you need to the road. A small tip is that you can continue adding the same material to other objects if not pressing ESC to exit. Here we have enabled the triplanar mapping feature. The effect may not be obvious, so we'll use this scene to briefly explain what it is. In architectural modeling, many may not pay attention to the scale of UV maps. In this case, problems might appear when the model is imported into D5, such as UV maps too large or small or different UV on one material. To fix this error, you can go back to the modeling software. But a quicker method is to turn on triplanar mapping in D5. This feature is also very helpful when there are peculiar looking models in the scene. If the materials do not fit them well, and have wired seams on the surface, you can fix this issue by enabling triplanar mapping and adjusting the blend amount. In a word, triplanar mapping can solve most UV issues. Okay, let's continue. Now we turn on the round corner effect for the materials. Round corner helps soften edges and makes your models more realistic, as edges are often not that sharp in reality. Of course, you can also adjust the radius of the round corner effect and set an appropriate value, same as what we've done before. Select another concrete material and apply it to the greenery area in the middle. Turn on triplanar mapping and round corner effects to remove the bluish tone of the concrete material. Go to the base color map and reduce the saturation value. Then reduce the contrast to make the texture grain less obvious. Here the concrete seems too bumpy. So decrease the normal map intensity a bit.
Remember how to reuse materials with hotkeys? The hotkey, I, can copy the material and, O, can paste it on other surfaces. Trust me, these hotkeys will greatly improve your working efficiency. Repeat the above process to complete other materials. We won't go into detail here. Now the floor is generally finished. Move on to the materials of building facades. First, the glass. You can choose a preset glass texture from the D5 asset library, or use the transparent material template. Select the target material, change its base color to white and the template to transparent. To make it more realistic, you can add a normal map with a bump effect. Copy and paste the set glass material onto other surfaces with the hotkeys I and O, which is very convenient. You can also continue to adjust one particular glass material. For example, the glass on our left hand side can be less reflective and transparent. Next, metal materials. Again, you can use the preset metal textures in the D5 asset library. Or create one yourself. Here we'll dive into the second method. Change the base color to white. And increase the metallic value a bit. If you need a matte metal, then increase its roughness. We highly recommend round corner for metal materials as it can produce well-shaped bevels. Paste the metal material to other surfaces and fine-tune them one by one. Continue to adjust other materials a simple plastic material for the window frames. An off-white material for other components of the facade. A gray wall paint material for the side face. Don't forget to adjust the UV scale, saturation, and light and shade. It is much the same for other materials. You can choose the same material as we do, or decide on your own. Material editing is an effort-taking process. The effect of a material depends not only on its own parameters, but also on the environment. So, you can't get them done in one shot but have to notice the interplay between the texture and the environment and constantly make adjustments. If you have curved surfaces, remember to use triplanar mapping and set a proper value for blend amount. Here we'll introduce a new material, 
emissive, which is easy to produce. You just need to switch on the emissive feature and adjust the brightness and color. If the effect is not obvious, you can go to the effect panel and pull the bloom slider a bit right. Keep on editing other textures. Here is a little trick. If you want to select one material behind another, press I and Alt and click the surface. Click once to select the first layer and twice on the second. You can see here the concrete behind the glass is picked up. After finishing the exterior part, we can continue to refine the interior of the building. First, add a wood texture to the ceiling. Then rotate and scale the UV map and give it the right color. For the floor, we used marble material. and adjusted it to the expected effect. For the walls, we used brick. You can choose the materials you like if they can fit into the environment. Remember to check how these materials look in the set camera view and adjust them accordingly.
by far. Material editing has been roughly done. The next step is to arrange lights in the scene, add decorations, and perhaps add more details to the models. But please note that in the following sections, when we further enhance the scene, we will continue to adjust the materials to make everything work together. As what we've said before, they are interrelated and mutually reinforcing.